metal sort of arrived in the halls of academia, you know, it's been acknowledged and it's like it's some sort of viable category for, for study and reflection. Metal has been so profoundly subdivided and classified and reclassified and the boundaries of what metal is and what certain subgenres and sub subgenres within heavy metal is are, are constantly being renegotiated. Academia looks at it and says there's quite a lot of things you can learn from community building, social capital, social cohesiveness in a context that is constantly losing social cohesiveness. Grymposium is a uh, two-day event which brings together the major stakeholders in the extreme metal scene, including musicians, journalists, writers, visual artists, uh, and a handful of academics who have been investigating the uh, extreme metal music scenes uh, on a global level. The conferences like this, like the Grymposium, are good because it allows people who maybe feel like posers or outsiders to get together and discuss things in a, what they perceive a safe and comfortable environment. Both metalheads and, and creators of the music love to shock people. And so coming up with a language that is abject or violent or bodily or that draws on the language of war is extremely uh, prevalent because those words get reactions. Metalheads definitely believe as long as you're causing somebody to react, you've done something right, whether that's a positive or a negative reaction. <laughs> Extreme metal specifically provides us with an opportunity to look at a counterpoint to social norms that in fact are imposed upon us through an education system that focuses on everybody doing well and everybody succeeding. And so it's a it's a reflection on a number of socio-political, cultural, linguistic, uh, and uh, economic codes that govern us. Puerto Rico lives a very tense colonial situation with the United States and heavy metal plays a great role in rebellion against oppressive contexts. So it's not a widespread mechanism for rebellion, but for the people that you do use it, it certainly becomes a, an intricate tool of questioning the system around them. It absolutely is still an extremely male-dominated genre, the loud, the aggressive, the violent, the sort of darker aspects of human nature. Somehow I'm supposed to be too delicate and refined to experience those things, which is completely incorrect. The metal does something wonderful in that it allows women to have the space to express that aggression and grotesquerie in the way that larger culture often denies. I think that with any subcultural form, it's human activity, it's valid. It has implications for how we articulate ourselves. Mainstream culture comes from subcultures over time. It's also one of those genres like comic books and video games and all of those sorts of things that are considered low art um, by some people that often doesn't get that serious critical engagement that's so deeply crucial to exploring, really plumbing the depths of, of any kind of art, no matter what it is. What I find with extreme metal is that it allows us to think about and define elements of death, destruction, chaos, and disorder, and allows us to build a critical understanding of how those elements are, uh, are functioning in society. Yeah.